What's up music makers? It's Luke from Sojourner Tracks at SojournerTracks.com. Signal flow or routing has got to be one of the least sexy topics in music production. But I have to tell you, once I figured out how it worked, how it could be manipulated, how it could make me more creative, more organized, and streamline my process, it changed everything for me. So Today I want to talk about how we can group instruments or groups of tracks and process them as a single unit using busing and auxiliary tracks and basically change the signal path or the routing to suit our needs, to suit our process, however it is that we're working. So if you find today's content helpful, I'd appreciate if you'd hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Let's get started. Okay, so I want to talk briefly about the kind of routing or signal flow that you're going to see within Logic. If you go to your mixer window and imagine that the input here is going to be your microphone, your guitar, your software instrument, whatever it may be, the signal is moving down through the plugins to the pan pot and to this volume control. From here, if it says on the output stereo out, that means it's going from the volume fader to this stereo output. Where this gets cool is that you don't have to send every track directly to the stereo output. We can take some detours along the way. For example, I have a pair of stereo guitars that sound like this. Left and right, panned hard. I don't want to work on these as individual tracks. I want to work on them as a single unit. So what I can do is click on the output and go to bus. Now a bus is not a destination, it is transportation. So think of it like an actual bus. If I select bus 1, you'll see a new track is created. This is now the destination for those two guitar tracks. You'll see this has been changed. The output has been changed to bus 1. The input of our new track is also bus 1. Both of these guitars are now coming here first before going to the stereo output. I can add EQ compression on my plugins here to affect both guitars at once. I can also adjust their volume. If I double click on the name, I can rename this guitars. You will see out here in the arrangement window, nothing has changed. If you would like to see this track in the arrangement window, you can right click and hit create track so that the track is now in the arrangement window. But I am actually going to get rid of all of that because I think there is a more convenient way to go about this. Same, same concept. If we shift click both of our guitars and right click on one of them, come down here to create track stack and summing stack is what we want. You'll see now this is sum one. If we go to our mixer window, you'll see the same exact processing has happened. So both of the guitars are outputting to bus one. Our sum one uh, track is now inputting at bus one. So it's the same concept. We can rename it guitars. The reason I like this better is because it automatically adds this to the arrangement window and it's also a collapsible stack. So when I'm not working on these guitars, I can collapse them, save some real estate on my screen. And this works for vocals. You can do this to synth instruments. Say you've got a pad and some keys playing the same parts combine those into a single instrument, treat them as, as one instrument, you might be surprised at the kind of uh, cohesion that you get out of 
um, making a single unit out of those instruments instead of treating them separately. Uh, but perhaps the most common use of this kind of routing is for a drum kit. And you can see down here I've got a pretty simple drum kit, but how do you keep all of these pieces uh, as a single kit? Treating the drum kit as a single instrument instead of a bunch of different pieces. And what you want to do is if you shift click and select all of them and create a track stack. Again, we now have one track to represent our whole drum kit, which means we can compress the whole drum kit, we can EQ the whole drum kit, we can add reverb to the whole drum kit. It just makes a whole lot more sense than trying to fight individual instruments. What I like to do is actually a step further than this because you can see there's kick in, kick out, two snare tracks. I don't want to treat these individually. I want to treat the kick as one single unit un unless there's some reason that I have to. Um, but you can see if I try to create another track stack, you can't create track stacks within track stacks. So if we go back to our mixer window, this is where things get just a little bit more complicated. So the drum track stack is uh, inputting on bus 2. and You can see all of the drum pieces are outputting on bus 2. So we are going to take the kick track on another detour before it gets to our track stack. And how we're going to do that is just by taking the output to a separate bus that is not being used. You can see the, a, a new track has been created. We're going to call this kick. So now both of our kick pieces are going out to this channel. The problem is this is now going to the stereo out so it's actually not a part of the drum kit anymore. So if you can imagine our kick pieces are outputting to this track and then going to the stereo output and coming out here. What we need to do is change this from stereo output to our drums which is bus 2. I know that gets a little bit confusing. You kind of have to think it through. Just take your time and uh, you'll figure it out. But now both of these kick pieces are going to bus 3, which is coming in up here, and then coming down and going out at bus 2, which is the whole drum kit. So we can solo this and here drum kit. So not only can we treat the multiple kicks and snares together, but then we can treat the drum kit as a whole together, um, and our vocals and our guitars. And if we use these within track stacks, we can collapse those to take up less space. It's better organized. It's more uh, approachable. And it just gives us a lot more creative flexibility to do different things with our plugins. So there you have a brief intro into routing in Logic Pro. I really hope that you found it useful and that you're going to be able to apply it in your next production. If it's been useful to you, please let me know how you've used it in the comments below. Or let me know uh, things that you might do differently that you found work for you. Again hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification. I'm uploading every week, and I will see you in the next video.